Welcome to Mega Path Presents. I'm Ronnie Hayes, and today we are going to watch, react, and rant a little bit to Fear the Walking Dead Season 2 Episodes, uh, what, 14 and 15? Now, I'm going to put them all together because they aired them together last night, but Amazon has them split up. No shit, right? Uh, so you have to buy them separately and watch them, view them separately, which doesn't matter. You just click a button. But what I'm saying is I'm going to watch them together as they were presented last night. Commercial free, though, so that's a bonus. Last night, I actually totally forgot it was the finale. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. I saw an ad for online for Westworld on HBO, and I got so damn excited to watch the premiere episode of that. I just totally forgot and then by the time i was already 10 15 minutes into westworld someone reminded me oh you know fear the walking dead's on are you watching it and i'm like no i'm already hooked to westworld you know in a, in a major way so i'm gonna have to let it ride out <laughs> and watch it tomorrow but i will say though i have no regrets because westworld was off the hook awesome it's definitely worth getting hbo now and if you're new here even though rant is in the title i should call it rant and rave because last episode i loved it and i raved the entire time i loved it but the point here is i'm gonna watch it and then talk about what i love and what i hate instantly as i'm viewing it you know I think they need a change in what they do when characters are being attacked by the walkers. Both shows suffer this, uh, don't forget, but right now we're going to focus on Fear the Walking Dead because that's what we're watching currently, but at no point in time did it look like Ophelia was even in danger because the walkers are on cue, waiting, mouth open, just waiting to die. And that is a stark contrast to the walkers that actually kill people will lunge and bite. And it's becoming too noticeable, too convenient, and it steals all the tension away from the scene. And you can't afford that in a show like this because we know right now Ophelia isn't randomly going to die out there, you know? That's never going to happen. I don't care how detached from storytelling you are as a viewer, you know she's not going to die. There's no way in hell. Her story up to that point wouldn't make sense at all. I feel like they do for season three. They need to find a different way to film that to add more suspense or tension or something. Interest. I'm almost waiting for her to just dispatch of the walkers and then let's let's get on to the story. And that's an odd thing to feel while you're watching a zombie story because every now and then you should look forward to them fighting off some walkers. But I'm watching Ophelia and I'm just like, okay, you know what? Kill them and let's go. You know, get to the story, watch her, you know, her journey or who she's looking for or a flashback than a scene with no suspense or tension while she's just fighting off walkers. Okay. Do they film this shit on purpose to look like the original show? Because more and more, like we get Nick walking down the highway, and we know they film that on purpose to represent Rick Grimes walking down into Atlanta. Uh, but this right here is the same shot that we had in season six where Rick is laying in bed with Michonne. It's the shot from the ceiling down. If somebody walks in on them and they get up and all like, like all crazy ready to rumble, I might just shut it off. <laughs> I enjoy Travis and Madison together when they're not fighting and stuff, you know? Also too, positive vibes. Travis and Alicia coming together. I think it's heartwarming and I think it's better. We are done seeing families bicker and bitch and moan and da 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 da. Hollywood's always doing that. It is refreshing to see families families, you know, and even connected families, you get what I'm saying, coming together like that. I like that better than the redundant bickering and fighting. All right, tell you what, Marco's a dumbass, okay? <laughs> I believe he would be a dumbass in real life, so I'm not gonna, you know, put a negative stain on the writing. That's fine. He feels believable. I like the scene. That's absolutely fine. I just can't believe somebody would be that dumb in 2016 to give a community a warning. I would have taken Nick, <laughs> you know, killed him if you were serious, killed his comrade, and then stormed them in a surprise. Give them a warning there where they don't have time to prepare and dig in. Oh well, whatever. Okay, I like I like that. Madison's clever. Damn. <laughs> nice. Damn. 
<laughs> that was vicious and fucking rad as fuck. To clarify, I'm talking about the zombie outbreak and Nick jamming his fingers in his eyeballs until he penetrated the zombie's brain. That was rad as hell. I like that. Zombie bit off that guy's face. I like that too. There's just no fucking way. There's no way I would get my nose bitten off and eaten or my fingers and then walk onto a bus, walk out into the Walker Wall graveyard and let them eat me, al you know, alive. There's just no way. Stab me in the heart on the bus, push me out the door. Oh, man. I like that guy. The guy who was shooting at uh, Ophelia. He's from Sons of Anarchy. Or he was. That's a good show, by the way. It was. Travis, fix his shoulder. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Travis. Beat his ass. <laughs> yeah! Fuck yeah! <laughs> no, that ain't enough. Come on. Yeah! Nice. Fuck yeah, I love that. Love that! Shit, yeah, that was good. <laughs> All right. Woo! Nice. You know, I talked about uh, Cliff Curtis being from Training Day, and he only had a small part in that, right? But it was such a powerful part, and he played it so damn well. Like, that contrasted with other parts he's played. So you can really see the range on Cliff Curtis as an actor. And even when he started, I talked about it, his ability and you know how dark he can play that role. And I think... He does it beautifully well. A darkness that's almost justified to a degree. Like, these people are pieces of shit. And I know it seems brutal. He brutally beat them to death. But I guarantee you, the way it's designed, the way these characters are fleshed out, if he would have let them live, they probably would have killed or hurt multiple people before they were put down themselves one way or the other. I mean, he probably... In a demented way, to look at it, he probably saved lives. Men, women, children. You know, who knows what they those kids would have developed into. You know, what kind of leaders. He could have killed the, the pre-governor. You know what I mean? Like that type of, of leader. Although those kids were too stupid and incompetent to become someone like that. But I'm just saying. Fucking love it. Elena. Dumb bitch. Alright, hold on. I'm pausing it right here because this is about to be some shit hitting the fan if they don't have Madison respond in the proper way. I'm going to flip my shit here because Madison should tell her plain as day. Alright, we went so well. I was loving every minute of Fear the Walking Dead until this point. This is not something I feel, you know, organically Hector would do. Hector, keep in mind, has been beefing with Oscar and his group since this started from the very beginning Hector was also kidnapped by Oscar and his group Hector's life was threatened in order to get the keys and even if that was an empty threat it felt and it looked and it appeared real to them and to us at the time it was happening Hector has no reason at all now maybe they built a bond over these past few weeks but we didn't see it so if you want Hector to act like this we need to see them building some type of bond other than just working together because you could work together with people you hate all of us have jobs where we hate someone where we work with them and we work with them fine for the most part you know what I mean I'm not buying it and if, you, um, if you're someone who doesn't study screenwriting, you're not in the entertainment industry at all, or you're not trying to, you're not interested in it, you wouldn't really know this, but they teach you all the time that conflict is king. Now, maybe you can make up multiple excuses to say, okay, this is something the character would, would do, but I think this is inserting conflict where it wouldn't organically exist, and it's just for the sake of creating conflict, because again... Conflict in movies and television is king. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Nick better run. I mean, Lucy's hot. But not hot enough to die for. <laughs> I mean, Ophelia's still alive. She's out there. Get going, Nick. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> Nick, uh, his response is serious, you know, but it's still comedic to the audience because it's so real, you know? Where... She's like, go ahead and leave or whatever. And he's like, wait a minute. You're just going to get slaughtered anyway. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I like that. 
I don't know what these idiots are thinking too. Do they have that many guns? If they do, okay, maybe you could put up a fight, get some snipers. I mean, that's some shit I would be doing, but it doesn't appear that they're doing any of that, so I don't know. Who wrote this fucking script? This is ridiculous. This is tearing the whole story down in this moment. Why the hell is Hector so vicious? Do we need to go over this again? He was kidnapped. He had beef with the guy that he's so caring about right now. It's fucking dumb. Even the brother, his own brother, the guy who's injured, his own brother is chill, you know. He took a chill pill. But Hector is all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a dick, you know. It's pissing me off. Doing so good, too. And that is another strong point. I've seen a few comments like this. And I, I haven't brought it up yet, but it, it's a very strong criticism that, uh, again, this is not comparing one show to the other. Walkers and how they act in the world of The Walking Dead will be the same as they will in the world of Fear of the Walking Dead because this takes place in the same exact universe. Like, Rick Grimes is just about waking up from his coma right around now or he's still in his coma he hasn't waken up yet i don't know the math on that but uh so the walkers will act the same in the prison they've already established that when the walkers hear noise when they something gets their attention they will just pile up so they're living and playing playing soccer being loud they're not staying quiet at all they're doing all that making all that noise in the community and the walkers are not piling up against this little ass fence that doesn't look as secure as the prison fence and even that was coming down so this entire wall idea should have really been reconsidered or have something that was a little bit not fucking stupid yeah as far as the chain length fence that was just dumb again it breaks the realism they already built up in this world and yes, you can have realism in a zombie show. How it works, the zombies are the only thing that's not real. Everything else is real life. Supposed to be. All right, That's weird. They just showed Nick with a lot of uh, blood on his face. But in the previews, it was only a little bit like this. So maybe he wipes it off. Okay, there we go. It looks like Nick has less blood on his face now. Is it a helicopter? And Hector's holding his fucking hand. Okay, you know what? I had to have missed something. I had to have fucking missed something. How did I miss them growing such a bond? What the hell is going on? Fuck yeah, nice speech. Madison speech. Alejandro can kick rocks. I like this. This Madison Travis, I'll understand if you have to kill again. When you have to kill again. You know? Because you'll have to. I'll have to. That, that shit's tight. Hector. Hector's dialogue should be... The brother's dialogue. Hector's even crying? Fuck yeah! Yeah! Feed his ass, Travis! Ten points for Alicia, too, by the way. That shit was tight. Yeah! Get going with them, Strand. Don't pussyfoot around now, Victor. Victor, you didn't even want to fucking stay at the hotel! I was right in this shit! Fuck me! That's just fucking dumb. You want to know some tight writing they should have fucking done? I mean, they knew they were getting to this point, right? Uh, Hector's brother, forgot his name, it's not important. They should have had him and Alicia instead of, uh, what did I say, Hector? No, Oscar, Oscar's brother, the guy who did the surgery, yada, yada, yada. They should have had him do the scene talking like how Hector and Alicia were. They should have had scenes like that. Built them kind of somewhat close as friends. The scene in the hotel room, them being friends, you got organic, you know, authentic friction there now. And it's conflict because the character wants to kill Travis, yet there's a little part of him that doesn't want uh, Alicia to see. And maybe even Madison, you know, but he's getting pushed to the edge. And then Madison is in tears, freaked out. And she said, just let me say goodbye. Just let me say goodbye. And even the audience is all like, oh, my God, that's so sweet. Alicia, you know, just wants to say goodbye. And she takes a step forward and stabs him. Now, it would have been, you know, just as fast paced as that was. Because that was kind of like, oh, out of nowhere. But I enjoyed it still. I don't know why they don't craft this. Like, we spent so much time on shit that could have been tweaked and altered to make this more impactful so some of this within the writing i don't understand you know what i mean i'm not even going to get into the strand shit right now 
So they were interrogating these people about where the Colonia is, but the address was on their license in their pocket. Sure. Man, if they had guns at the Colonia, that shit would have been easy. You could have hidden the bus, and when they all got on the bus, you literally could have just mowed them down. Baka, 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 baka. Man. Yeah, fucking go with the militia. Why wait in the van, you know? I just want to state, though, for the record, everybody at this point in time should have some type of weapon. I'm assuming Alicia still has her knife, but she's not holding it. It's not out and ready. She should. Yeah, Travis, pick up as many weapons as you can find. Shit, yeah, dude. Check the clip, too. Madison's just like, okay, I'll pick up this random weapon because I know it has bullets. I'm sorry. Check the magazine. <laughs> hmm. How do you know that's a refugee camp, though? I mean, chances are it is. I'm just saying. That wouldn't really be the first thing I thought of. Here we go. Okay. That wasn't so, uh... That wasn't terribly predictable. Remember we talked about the, uh... Lucy thing? Either being rushed in there because they were gonna kill her, or da-da-da-da. Just, you know, rushing that romance, so to speak. Uh, I'm glad they didn't at the very end, because that would have just been... Yeah. <laughs> So I'm glad it appears that she just got wounded. You know, we know Hollywood should probably just put a Band-Aid on and be good in a little bit. But, uh, yeah, you know what? I like the last three episodes. I think they were probably some of the strongest, minus the one glaring flaw, which is Hector. Hector, man, damn. That, yeah, wow. Other than that one major flaw, now, listen, there could be a couple minor ones here and there. That's fine. That one huge flaw, because it just uh, it tore at the story. Um, I fucking loved it. I loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. I'm going to do my final thoughts in the review, which is already up. So click on that eye up here. Uh, move your cursor on the screen. The eye will appear. Click that drop-down menu. I'm going to put that and a few other video recommendations and playlists in the list. So check those out when you get a chance. All right. Thanks for coming by. Put your thoughts and opinions. What did you think about the last three episodes and this two-hour season finale for Fear of the Walking Dead Season 2? What did you think about it? Put those thoughts and opinions down in the comment box. I'm done talking. It's your turn. Subscribe now.